today from Pasadena, California, Michigan versus USC. In the 1979 Rose Bowl. And what a gorgeous first day of 1979 here in Pasadena, California. You're looking in the Arroyo Canyon. In the background, the famed San Gabriel Mountains. Just a perfect day for a football. Temperature is 75 degrees. A slight breeze will be blowing from the right goal to the left. Ideal. Now we're moving into the famed Rose Bowl Stadium. 106,000 fans jammed in here. They could have sold nearly 200,000 tickets for this game. The field will be lightning fast and in perfect condition. Hi, everybody. Kurt Gowdy with John Brody, O.J. Simpson, and a very happy New Year to you. This is the 65th Rose Bowl game. It's one of the more intriguing matchups we've ever had. Each team has lost only one game. And, of course, there'll be a national debate. Alabama was leading Penn State. If Alabama wins and USC wins there, many will claim that it's USC to be number one because they defeated Alabama earlier in the year. And if Michigan wins, Bo Schembechler says, we beat a great team, we should be number one. Well, we'll be deciding that and the fans later on. First of all, let's talk to John Brody. Every time Michigan's come here, John, they have moved into the Rose Bowl as the underdog. Not this, uh, this year, they uh, are the underdog and not the favorite. Well, I don't know how, men, how much these motivational factors really apply to the game itself. I know that Michigan came out here with their game face on. Bo Schembechler has done things a bit differently this year. They've only hit about three times in practice. They are definitely ready. I think you're going to see a great ball game. I give Michigan its best chance ever. O.J., uh, USC's had a lot of great teams. You played on some. How good is this current crop? Well, I think it's as good as any recent team SC's had. They have an excellent offense. They have no weaknesses on offense. On defense, they've had a few injuries. they got some young guys playing there. But I think they're ready. I think Paul McDonald ready. And I think Paul McDonald, the quarterback, is going to be the key in this game. If USC wins, would you say that they should be the mythical national champ? Well, you know, at the end of every season, you see the top two teams, and you wish you could get them in the bowl game. Well, fortunately, this year, it may be Alabama SC. They have played earlier in the year. SC won that game decisively. They've had a tough schedule. They played five bowl teams, plus Michigan State, the co-champ in the Big Ten. They've won all those games. And if they win big here today, if I had a vote, they'd get mine. But they get that anyway. Well, uh, Johnny Robinson, the USC coach, was asked earlier about this situation by Bryant Gumbel. Simple question. If Penn State loses and you win, should you be national champion? You're not speaking to it, a very objective guy, but I, yeah, I think we should be considered. I mean, in all honesty, nobody knows who should be and who shouldn't be. I think the only thing that would concern us if, if we're not considered, uh, if Alabama and ourselves come down to the choice, if your choice is between the two, you ought to at least consider that the two teams played and one of them won. Consider it. <laughs> yes. Heavily. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we win this game. <laughs> Bo Schembechler has never won here. He's had the best coaching record in college football the last 10 years. He's left frustrated every year. What does he have to do to win here today? I think you're going to see Michigan do things that they haven't done as much of in the past. I think Rick Leach has to have a big day. I think he's capable of having one. People have said, can he play pro football? I think he can. I think he's a great all-around athlete. He knows what he's facing. I think he's going to put it up early, and I think he'll have some success. In other words, you're looking for Michigan to be more wide open than they have. It's against Bo Schembechler's viewpoint, but I do think he's going to have a go at it early. Right. Here they are, the Michigan Wolverines. Trojans are gathering. O.J., there they are. Yeah, they look like they're ready. You know, I want to say something about Michigan. You know, I have a younger sister who was trying to pick a college, and I said, if you don't go to SC, go to Michigan, because I played with a lot, lot of Michigan players. When you have a Michigan rookie, get up on rookie show in, in professional football, hey, they stand up on that chair tall, and they spelt out that Michigan song. They have a lot of pride in their school. Oh, Jim Becker jumping in with his club, a very intense, emotional coach. There they go. And Michigan will spread out to kick off. They have a great defensive ball club. They allow just eight points a game average scored on them. So the high-powered USC offense will have their work cut out. Brian Virgil, a junior from Buchanan, Michigan, will be kicking off. Johnny Robinson. 
three years. He's won 30 and lost six at USC. And the Trojans will be spreading out now and receiving formation. USC beat Michigan here in the 77 Rose Bowl game. They beat him rather handily to control the ball most of the time. Charles White is going to be back as one of the receivers. He's the tailback, dangerous runner. And Raymond Butler, an outside receiver, number 86, as the other. Now the crowd of 106,000 warms up, ready to go. And the 65th Rose Bowl game is underway. They kick away from White. He squibs this one, touched by one of the short men, picked up, and it's down on the 17-yard line, and that's not very good field position for USC. Ball was being handled around uh, by Mike McDonald. All right, here is the backfield for USC. McDonald, the quarterback, Kane, the fullback, White, the tailback. Of course, White is a big man. He's the guy that led him all year this year, but Paul McDonald, he's the guy to watch. If he's hot, SC could be tough. All right, let's watch this first play from Scrimmage. They run the famed power eye. They're on their 17, first down. They're putting Williams in motion, setting it up as a slot, and back he goes again. Now back again. <laughs> and there's a flag down, and charging offside was number 78, Otis Page. Ron Simpkins made the pass. They had so many men in motion, the same man going so many ways. They had Otis Page confused as he broke offside. It's against USC, a glaring offside. Let's take a look at the uh, receiving core of the University of Southern California. Hunter is the tight end. Cal Sweeney, the split end, the flanker, is little Kevin Williams. They call Kevin Williams the bug. Now, he's an interesting story. He made all pack 10, but he only caught 17 passes. He only weighs 155 pounds. He didn't do it by blocking, but he did it because he caught 10 touchdowns. Van Horn, Buddy, Peters, Howell, and Page are up front. STSG means strong side. WTWG means weak side tackle and guard. Slot formation. First down, 15. Look at Michigan. Boy, they're in there. Michigan had Curtis Greer, the defensive right tackle. Let's take a look at the Michigan defense hitting Charlie White. They've changed their lineup. Turgovac did not start. Godfrey and Greer the tackles and Kites is now at center. Kurt, you'll notice also they're playing an even defense right now. They've got them lined up as if they've got a nose guard. Dale Kites has to have a big day on Ray Peters for Michigan to do well. But they're playing an even defense right now and stuffed them on the first play. They have a second down, 19 USC. From their eight yard line. The pitch is to White. And White, not much. Met at the line of scrimmage. We told you the hallmark of Michigan is pursuit, quickness, and gang tackling. There are the linebackers. Jerry Meter's the co-captain, but Ron Simpkins is the man they try to keep all offensive people off. They like to leave him alone, see if he can't bring down the ball carry. He's had a great year. He's a real All-American. He should have a big day. Third down, 19 to go. Slot right, USC. They're in a hole early in this game. That's Kane, number 21. Very quick starting fullback, Lynn Kane. And he's hit by Andy Canavino. Number 41, the inside line. Look at Michigan. They're fired up. They've held him. And now Marty King will come in the punt for the Trojans. And he'll be standing in his end zone when he receives the snap. Mike Jolly is the safety man. Good kick. Tremendous bounce for USC. And that ball is dead by the 28-yard line of Michigan. Jolly let it roll. Both from the line of scrimmage. There's the kicker, Marty King. The backfield for Michigan. All-American Rick Leach at quarterback. Davis is the fullback. Huckleby is the tailback. And both of those running backs have run for over 2,500 yards in their three-year career. Well, that was a 64-yard kick by Marty King. No score early. First down, Clayton the flanker in motion. They run the option series. Huckleby the tailback is hauled down to the 29-yard line. 
by Dennis Johnson, the strong side inside linebacker. The receivers, the tight end is Gene Johnson, Rodney Feaster, Ralph Clayton are the outside men. Be a perfect day for Rodney Feaster to have a big one. Second down nine, they put Roosevelt Smith in at tailback. Dufek, Bartnick, Nada, Power, Geisler up front for Michigan. Second down and nine. Fake play action pass. Leach fired over the head. Intercepted by the Trojan. Intercepted there by Lott. Lott's back in the Michigan territory and carries the ball down just short of the Michigan 15. Ron Lott, the rover, defensive back. Here we have man in motion. However, it's just a simple little two-man pattern. Fake to the running back coming through. No backs out in the pattern. Both wide receivers trying to get a piece of it. Ralph Clayton jumps high, cannot get the ball picked off by Ron Lott. SC's got in great field position on the 16-yard line. It looked like a pre-planned play. He had about six red shirts in front of him just as he caught it. I tell you, John, that's good for SC. It could hurt Michigan not completing passes earlier. A 34-yard return of that interception by Lott. Charlie White slips through a hole, and he goes to the 12-yard line. White rushed for one mile this year, 1,760 yards. There are the defensive backs of Michigan, Bell, Jolly, Brayman, and Harden. Jolly knows he's got his hands full today. He'll be outside on a corner on Kevin Williams most of the day. Rock. Shannon is in now, tied in. Number 80. There he is in motion. Cut back. White slips inside the 10 to the 9-yard line, Charlie White. Ron Simpkins, who leads Michigan in tackles, back the all-time tackling record, 174 for the season, made that last hit on Charlie White. If you notice, SC has been trying to establish an off-tackle and outside running game. I think they may be a little concerned about running up the middle. Ray Peters, the guy who's starting at center for USC, is the sixth string center. They had an incredible string of bad luck with their center. Take a look at Peters there. He played nose guard up to this year, and they moved him to center when they lost everyone. Third down and three for the Trojans. And down and watch the throw, and he's got it for a touchdown. He hit his receiver in the end zone for the touchdown. And Kobe Brenner. Kobe Brenner, where'd he come from? <laughs> He's listed as about a four-stringer. Juice just said he wasn't in his game plan. <laughs> Kobe Brenner caught that ball. We got him hot. <laughs> okay, Paul McDonald, little fake in there, Lynn Kane. He comes off. Actually, it was excellent defensive coverage. You see, he's getting pretty good pressure. Puts the ball the only place it can be thrown. And Hobie Brenner comes up with six. He is a sophomore. He's not even listed in the first three deep. The kick is up by Frank George. The kick is good. And USC has jumped out in front. And that's what Michigan was trying to avoid. Timeout with a score. The Trojans seven, the Wolverines nothing. We're going to have a rerun now of the touchdown. OK, McDonald has been their leader. Juice, you hit it on the head. He's the guy that has to have a big day. All his receivers look covered. Perfect touch on the ball over the top of the defenders into the arms of Brenner, and they take the lead. John, I want to ask you, is a quarterback like a pitcher? I mean, Leach came out. They know he has to pass. His first pass is, is an interception. Can he forget that? I think certain guys can. Others can't. I think uh, Rick Leach will come back firing. I don't think he's the type of guy with the makeup. I don't think it'll bother him. Kicking off now will be Frank Jordan. Jackson and Clayton are deep. Jackson has it, and he downs it for the touchback. There's been a big roar here in the Rose Bowl. They just announced the final score. Alabama knocking off Penn State 14-7. Penn State's first loss of the year. And now a real national debate is going to go on. If USC wins here, they defeated Alabama at Alabama at Birmingham. Well, 
Will they be number one? What do you think about it, uh, O.J.? Well, you heard the cheer that went up when they heard the score here in the stadium. I think there's a lot of SB people, including myself, <laughs> who feels that SC, if they can pull this game off, should be the national champions. They beat Alabama in Alabama, which is certainly tough for any team. Of course, if Michigan wins, they think they could have it. Look at that hole open. That was uh, Ricky Gray who made the tackle. And carrying the ball was Russell Davis on the quick opener. John, what do you think about it all? I think Michigan's concerned with winning this football game, and uh, they'd have to leapfrog an awful lot of people. And I, and I think USC better be concerned with winning this football game because right now is all that matters, and all that other stuff is up to other people's vote. They do their part. They can be satisfied. That'll all be settled later. On the 24-yard line of Michigan, the Wolverines have a second down and two. Ralph Flayton going out in motion. Leach keeps the ball. Now pitches to Huckleby. Huckleby has the first down on the option play. Huckleby averaged 5.3 yards this year. Gained 713 for the year and missed three games with a bad knee. I'm a little surprised that Leach is running the option to the right. He's left-handed. Uh, he runs well to the left. And as we said before, with the, 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 the defensive end for USC on that side is Dennis Edwards. He's a freshman, and he hasn't played all year. And I thought they would test him a little more than what they're doing right now. 547 left in the first period. USC leading 7-0. Alan Mitchell is in the game as a wide receiver, number 30, replacing Feaster. Out of motion is Clayton. Leach to the tailback. Huckleby, that was a deep handoff. Huckleby trying the middle, got to his 34. Ran into the freshman Ricky Gray and Dennis Johnson, the two inside linebackers. And Michigan knows if they're going to be in the game, have a good chance to win, they've got to win at the line of scrimmage. That time, Greg Bartnick, Steve Nauta, John Powers, the three of them up front did their job. They have two tight ends for Michigan. Gene Johnson, 88. Doug Marsh, 80. A little more blocking power. Look at those impressive statistics. He holds a string of records now at the University of Michigan. Rich Lee keeps the ball, throws it out to Huckleby. Huckleby slammed out of bounds on the 42-yard line, but has another first down. Driven out by Johnson and Dennis Smith. All right, three years ago, you might have seen uh, Rick Leach fire that ball out to his to his running back. This time, just perfect touch. He's got pretty good. He's got a pretty good rush on him. Lays the ball up just where Huckleby needs it. They pick up a first down, and they're on the march. And here's Huckleby. Huckleby is a speed man. If they have a breakaway man, he's the man here. I think they have to do this more today. They got to throw little swing passes. I don't think Leach should get impatient and try to throw downfield. Their running game thus far has been going real well for them. They're on their 41 with the first down. Ellen Mitchell in motion. Keeper, Leach, the reverse pivot, comes over the 45 to the 47. They're opening holes now. Leach stopped by Ricky Gray and Gary Cobb. This is something you can't teach. He's got a few options, but just as he spins, he's got to make a, he's got to make a move on Dennis Johnson, who absolutely got annihilated out of the <laughs> hole. He, he took the proper break, and he's got it to where they need three for first. They're on their 47 with a second and four. The clock moving. Four and a half to play in the first period. USC out in front, 7-0. They scored with 10.47 to go in the first period. That's Russell Davis, the fullback. Davis is hit by Dennis Edwards, a freshman, and Rich Dimmler, the nose guard. Marv Goh, the assistant coach at USC, says he is the toughest nose guard they ever had there. And if Marv Goo said that, he's got to be some sort of cat. I right? tell you, Marv Goo recruited me. They used to call him my daddy when I was at SC, made sure I went to class. But Marv Goo has coached 11 All-Americans, and if he said that about Dimmler, Dimmler must be a tough kid. The tight ends are bringing the plays in. Ralph Clayton's back in now. Mitchell's out. Third down and a yard to go for Michigan. They have Roosevelt Smith there. They have a blitz on. And they, Gary, they, they had everybody but the kitchen sink coming that time. And they disguised it very well because they, they waited until Leach could not get into an audible. They didn't have anybody to pick up the, the, the blitzing linebacker coming right up the middle. Leach had nowhere to go. You can see he's barely the first guy back there. You're going to see number 49, Dennis Smith, the safety, come flying in there. They had a safety blitz on, and they just couldn't pick up all the men. Looked like they had a meeting back there. 
That's what it looks like from Leach's uh, viewpoint. Not too good. But formation, Greg Wilner will do the kicking. Raymond Butler is a safety man. The ball is bouncing to the USC 31-yard line where the Trojans have it. First down, USC on their 31. Charles White. White is cut down on the 34-yard line of USC. You keep watching Michigan, and you notice how quick they are, how quickly they move laterally. Well, they better, <laughs> because that number 12 can scoot. You know his biggest thrill, and he's had a lot of them, he now has gained more yards than any running back in the history of the Pac-10 conference. Big deal. Big deal. <laughs> White again, he's hit and pulled down on his 41-yard line. Bo Schembechler said, O.J., it's phenomenal how they'll let a back carry the ball 30 times a game. Way White, how many, uh, you averaged over 35 times a game, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, about 38. I think one, you run so much in practice, you run about twice that amount of time in practice. But the big thing is, SC will always have a big, strong, sturdy offensive line. And I think a back can carry the ball quite a bit if he has big, strong linemen, because defensive linemen are not tackling them. And if they're tackling them, your offensive line is not doing the job. Third down, 11. Trojans operating out of the eye. Oh, he's hit. The ball's loose. Michigan has it. Tom Seabrook, 91 in there. Smacked into it. Dale Kites recovered the fumble. And Michigan has the ball. They hit him before his hand started forward. And that is the worst lick a quarterback can take. When he, when he gets a hit from his blind side, and Paul McDonald's blind side is his right since he's left-handed. He was looking down to the short side of the field, had no idea that Seaburn was on his way, and the lights went out. Uh, that's a charged-up ball club. Yeah, they are. SC's offense hasn't done much today. Uh, I saw that Paul was injured, or seemed to be injured right there, and if he goes out, SC could be in a lot of trouble. That 91 Seaburn has really been penetrating. He's got a key because he's getting loose. Nobody seems to be in his way. They've got to find a way to get it. And we've come to the end of the first uh, period with a score, USC 7 and Michigan nothing. We'll return to the Rose Bowl in just a moment. Right now, we pause for these messages from your local station. Okay, this is how the turnover occurred. Gives Michigan the same kind of break SC had early in the ball game. McDonald is back, and you can see he barely gets set up before Seabrook lowers the boom on him, and the ball takes a hike. Michigan's got it on a 23. First scoring opportunity for Michigan on the SC 23. Out of the eye, Leach keeps. And lunges forward to the 20-yard line. Ricky Gray, the weak side linebacker, the freshman from Tucson, Arizona, made the stop on him. This is the magic quarter for USC. Get this. This year, in the second quarter, they scored 128 points. Their opponent scored six. The magic quarter for Michigan is the third period when they scored 90 points to just seven for the opponent. So we'll see how USC fares in the second period against the fired up Michigan ball club. They're gonna leave, need a lot of magic, it looks like right now. Second down eight, Clayton going in motion. Leach on the keeper, there's it out. He's got him out there and he dropped the ball. Huckleby could have gone for the first down. He could have, he might have gone all the way downtown. There was nobody in the area. And that's the second time they've ran that play, and that the, the second time nobody was near him. They ran it earlier in the first quarter. Huckleby picked up a first down, and I think he would have scored there. Well, Juice, if you have watched Michigan play over the years, they've thrown very few passes to their running backs. I'm sure that SC knows that. However, Rick Leach has turned, has turned the tempo around a bit. He's thrown to his backs. He's had a few wide receivers open. It's just a matter of time if he keeps pumping. They have a third and eight. Huckleby's caught one pass of this game. He had received only five all year. Third down eight. And they stop at the 18-yard line, Russell Davis. They were trying to get a trap and a quick opener there, but Rich Dimmler, the nose guard, 255, said, huh-uh. So let's see what they do now. They have a fourth down and six. They're at the 18-yard line of USC. And B.J. Dickey, sophomore, will hold. 
and doing the kicking will be Greg Wilder. He had six out of 12 this year. This will be a 36 yard attempt. The kick is up, up, and the kick is good. Michigan is on the board. 36 yard field goal with 13 37 to go in the first half. Lining up for the kickoff, and we'll be back at the Rose Bowl. Kicking off, Brian Virgil for Michigan. Charles White, Raymond Butler deep for USC. And this one is handled by Butler. The 20 breaks away. He's at the 30, 35, 40, 45, still going and is down in Michigan territory at the Michigan 49. Gerald Diggs got him, number 29, a junior from Chicago. Marcus Allen, number 33, was out front, made two or three blocks. Uh, he did just about all a man leading the ball carrier can do. You're gonna hear a lot about Marcus Allen in the years to come. He's a top player from, from, from San Diego, and he may be the big tail back in the, after Charles White leaves SC. But you see him, he broke back to his left, Picked up some blockings, and there's Mark, Marcus Allen hustling for him in front of him. He tried to cut back there, just couldn't quite make it. 41-yard return around the Michigan 49. That's Kane ripping through to the 41. Lynn Kane is stopped by Gene Bell, number 42. And watch this block by Charles White. I guess when you're not carrying the ball, you must be active. <laughs> Blocking behind the, the runner. And that, that is shows a you're into the game. That's a defensive tackle, Curtis Greer. And there's a little size difference. Once he once he hit him, he wasn't satisfied. He went after him again. It shows the man's in the game, huh? <laughs> Second down two. Again, the hole open for Lynn Kane. They're going to him now. They've been checking Charlie White. White has only 13 yards and 11 carries. And now it's Kane. I'll tell you, Kurt, I, I've got a question, Juice. They seem to be more effective running right up the gut. Now, SC's, SC's uh, personality has been to run wide. You call it student body right, student body left. But they have been effective when they run up the gut. Well, I think it's because of Michigan's defense is so quick. We'll get into that after this play. Kane for the third straight carry. Listen to these figures to show you how ferocious these defenses have been. Total yardage for Michigan in this game 24 yards, 17 on the ground, seven passing. USC, 14 passing, minus four rushing. Total of 10 yards. Yeah, one of the problems, that with, if there's a problem with lining up so deep at tailback is if you play against a quick team, the pursuit can get there by the time you get to the line of scrimmage, and that's what's been happening. Michigan's defense is so quick, they're meeting Charles at the point of attack. So they're hitting them quick, just like this, up the middle. That's what they're doing now, Lynn Kane. For the fourth time in a row, had the ball, he's had room, and he is quick. Simpkins makes the hit on him. All right, Ron Simpkins has got his work cut out for him. He's got Buddy coming down the line, Adam Howell coming down the line. Peters is doing his job in the middle on kites. And Lynn Kane is picking up the yardage. Lynn Kane is the big ball carrier in this game at 26 yards. The average five yards a carry scored four touchdowns this season. First down. There's a hole for him. White, his biggest gain of the day. The SC, SC hitting them quick up the middle, forces the defense to play a little tighter, but forces the linebackers to respect Lynn Kane, and then those off tackle holes begin to open. I believe Charles White hurt. hit it quick. He got outside real quick, and this is just right here, just all effort, all desire. I think sending Kane up the middle has really changed things now. I know this, Charles White likes it when he sees a little daylight. If you get past the point of attack with the ball in your hand, those defensive backs can't do a job on you. First down, goal to go. Trojans on the Michigan five. Kane goes to the three and a diving thrust. Or Charles White on the diving thrust, hit by Turtovac and Mike Harden. And you notice the tight end, Vic Rakshani. He came back and then peeled into the line to try and lead the blocking. Three-yard line, second down, three to go for a USC touchdown. 7.45 to go. Bo Schembechler is anxious. 
You're talking about tough. This is the toughest part of the football field to gain anything on. White again. And a fumble. With a big fumble. They say he was over. Doesn't matter what happens after he's above or over the goal line. He had crossed or was over the goal line and scored. We may have a chance to see it, but if he if he did fumble the ball when he hit the ground, he definitely was in the end zone. Well, I'm for SC, but I thought <laughs> I thought he had lost control of it before he got into the end zone. But hopefully, we'll get a chance to see it again. Right after the point after touchdown, we'll take a good look at it, and you will judge for yourself. Frank Jordan, who has kicked two dramatic field goals two years ago against UCLA and against Notre Dame this year, will try the point. It is up, and the point is good. So USC now builds their lead with 14 to 3. Now let's take a look at this play at the goal line with Charlie White bucking in. You let them look for themselves. I can't even see the ball, let alone whether oh, I can't see the ball. It looked like the ball was behind him, though, John. But all he had to do is break the plane of the end zone and it counts. I thought he had lost it. See the ball below. The ball is right there. Now, what you can't tell is whether he was over the plane of the end zone when the ball fell out. And I don't think we should put ourselves in a position of judgment when we're not on that goal line. They're well, on the goal line. Well, I'm not on the goal line. I'm for SC, but I thought he fumbled the ball. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad. We must be living right, you know, down here in Southern California because it's seven points no matter how you look at it now. Now, Michigan will have a lot of controversy to say about that. Boy, Simpkins, Simpkins made a good he made a good play to get a piece of that ball and get it out of White's hands. They had a controversial play in an earlier Rose Bowl game. Art McCoskey of Northwestern uh, at the goal line. Many say he fumbled. They call it a touchdown against the University of California. You know something, Kurt, that things like this often have a way of equalizing themselves out. They'll, they'll even out as the game goes on. Here's the kick coming to Tony Jackson. Jackson up to his 28-yard line. First down, Michigan from their 34 in the waning seconds of the first half. Leach is throwing the bomb to Clayton. Clayton's down there and he can't get it. And he was well covered along the way by Carter Hartwick. Carter Hartwick, a senior, second string quarterback, had him all the way. Clayton can run. Clayton will write some poetry about that one. He he uh, writes poetry on the sign. Well, he may, the poetry may go something like, I could not catch him. He had a lead of about 18 yards when the ball was thrown. Well, I tell you, the ball was thrown perfectly, and if no one was in front of him, it would have fell right into his hand. I don't think he would have had to break stride, but he was defensed real well. Now we're down to 19 seconds in the first half. If you join us late, USC scored first. The Brenner, a third string uh, tight end, caught a touchdown pass. A short one of nine yards. The Michigan had a field goal. And Charlie White plunged three yards for a touchdown. That ball is overthrown. It's grabbed by Dennis Smith. Smith on the run to the 40 and is down on the 31. And we have eight seconds to go in the first half as a clock stop. Leach overthrew his man. Kurt, they've got time for one pass play to get the ball down within field goal range. They're about three or four yards short right at the time. I know that they do have a kicker that can kick pretty accurately, but not from 48 yards. Let's take a look. Re Leach, defensively, these fellas are 20, 25 yards deep. He's trying to hit over the top of the linebackers in between the, the defensive safety men. Dennis Smith is standing right in center field in the perfect place to pick it off. Seventh interception this year. Uh, SC has an interesting situation here. They can throw maybe a quick pass and get in field goal range or try for the long one and have no time in the half. But as you can see, the guy is open. The ball is thrown over. I think he was trying to throw over a linebacker and have it drop in. Uh, I don't think he's developed that touch just yet. And uh, Dennis Smith was waiting for it. Now Dennis Smith, by the way, is a sophomore. That's his seventh interception this year. And he was a state high jump champ. Let me tell you a story about that. He, uh, he hadn't high jumped in two years. And this year they brought him out for the UCLA meet and he jumped seven feet. <laughs> seven feet? Seven feet after not jumping for a year. Not bad. That's they let him out of spring training. Maybe we'll see him in Moscow, huh? 
They do. All right. Eight seconds to go in the half. USC has the ball in the Michigan 30. White's out of motion. They'll spread them all out. McDonald's tossed to the sideline. And it is complete. And there's still two seconds left, so they've got plenty of time to pick a field goal. That was absolutely perfect, because if he have caught the ball inbounds, I don't think they could have got it up and got the clock stopped in time. He caught yeah. the ball right at the sideline, went out of bounds, and Frank Jordan, a guy who's had some big moments, is on the field now to maybe have another biggie. And the play was made possible by an excellent fake on McDonald's part. And a lot of time. Frank Jordan, whose longest kick this year has been 40 yards, will try a 35-yarder. With two, out of 19 for him. With two seconds left. He beat UCLA with two seconds left last year, beat Notre Dame with two seconds left. This year, and with two seconds left, he kicks another one in the Rose Bowl. He's a two-second man. <laughs> yeah. That's the third game with two seconds to go at a half or game at the end of a game that he's kicked the field goal. So the opportunity, Tunis uh, Trojan, intercept throw a pass and kick a field goal and grab a last second score. Now you want to talk about a two second drill. <laughs> well, here's the SC two second drill. Of course the clock was stopped. Right down the middle. He's had some big moments as a Trojan. He acts like, well, it's automatic, gentlemen. Just time to pick up my towel and that's it. Well, that's the end of the first half here from Pasadena, California. And the score is USC 17 and Michigan 3. Kurt Gowdy, John Brody, O.J. Simpson, halftime score 17-3 USC. We've had a first at the Rose Bowl. This is the 65th Rose Bowl game. We had an earthquake, a 4.1 reading on the Richter scale, and a definite earthquake, y'all. We didn't feel anything up here. I thought O.J. was moving over there a little bit. <laughs> I've lived through a few earthquakes out here in California, but you want to see a stadium empty, you would have seen a record empty end of a stadium if the fans would have known it was earthquake going yeah, on. Yeah, we'd have been time. sitting in El Segundo. That's... <laughs> I yeah. always tell them, I always tease Reggie McKenzie, I said, no, we're going to be an island. We're not falling into the sea. We're going to be an island. You're going to have to pay a lot of money to come out with. All right, now remember today in the Sugar Bowl, Alabama defeated previously unbeaten Penn State 14-7. to USC has lost only one game this year. They defeated Alabama early in the year. Michigan has lost only one game. And uh, those Michigan fans. So the importance here is if USC wins with the defeat over Alabama earlier, that is really going to stir up a national debate who's the medical champ and Penn State losing Michigan. If it rallies to win, they would have quite an argument. And don't think that the score is any indication of the way this ball game has gone. Michigan has taken them on at the line of scrimmage. They've played head to toe with them. I think they've played every bit as well. They got one touchdown gift given to USC. We mentioned earlier that Rick Leach has to have a good day for Michigan to win. He is so instrumental in, to their offense. That's Paul McDonald, who has had a pretty good day up to now. But Rick is two for 10 with two interceptions. Both those balls were poorly thrown. I think we'll see a lot more throws in this half, and they can get right back in it. Tony Jackson is nailed deep in his own territory on the kickoff, and down there covering is Kenny Moore, a sophomore from San Fernando. You know, Kurt, you were talking about SC's phenomenal second quarter. They outscored the opponent 10-3 uh, to 3 in the second quarter today, but Michigan is noted for their third quarter. Let's see how they do in it. Roosevelt Smith is starting the second half. And he uh, hits one over the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Stopped by Ricky Gray and Larry McGrew. Your backfield, Rick Leach, the quarterback. Roosevelt Smith is the tailback. Russell Davis is the fullback. They're alternating the tight ends. Doug Marsh coming on the field in place of Gene Johnson. Feaster and Clayton are the wide receivers. Geisler, Powers, Nada, Bartnick, and Dufek are up front. Second down, five, Michigan. On their 26. Piled up is Russell Davis. Davis piled up by Ricky Gray and Larry McGrew. The play that Russell was just running is what they call a 32 trap. You know, SC had some big success on one on one series running a 32 trap when we saw Kane shooting up the middle. And you know what SC got that play from? Michigan. Two years ago when they were playing Michigan, they couldn't stop Rob Hurdle on that play. So they start running Rick Kane on that play. Let's take a look. You know, you, you're talking about, about the effectiveness of, of people up front. 
I really think it's been pretty even that way. You see the real problem statistically, two for 10 for Leach. That's got to improve. Leach flares it out. He hits his receiver. That is Roosevelt Smith. And Smith is close to a first down, tackled by Brazil. Roosevelt Smith made an excellent play to get the first down. They may measure, but it's a first down. A back must know where that 10-yard chain is. He knew, had to make a good individual move, got, got by the two linebackers, picked up the first. Well-thrown ball out in the flat, hits him right on the run. And this is the same play they threw to Huckabee a couple of times in the first half. As I said, they had a first down one time, and he dropped the ball the other time. But each time, the guy has been open for a positive yard. Kurt Gowdy, John Brody, O.J. Simpson in the Rose Bowl. Michigan has a first down on their own 40-yard line. They're 14 points behind. They're approaching the midway mark of the third period. Leach is looking. Flares it out. He's got it to Roosevelt Smith. And Smith is stopped at the 46 by Gary Cobb, the strong side out linebacker. Kurt, they're giving him that, that pass. I think it's very sane if they take advantage of it, pick it up on first down. One of these times, he's going to break away from those linebackers trying to recover. They're giving up everything, going into the middle of the field, trying to keep make a tough throw for Leach to get to one of his wide receivers. As a result, he's leaving his backs open. I just wouldn't stop throwing it until they covered it. Gary Cobb, number 53, slid right along with him. Roosevelt Smith had four catches today. He had only five in the regular season. Second down, four. The option. Leach on the pitch out to Smith. Smith tumbled down in USC territory at the USC 47. But that's enough for a first down. And the safety man, Dennis Smith, made the hit on him. And when the safety men have to come up on an option play and get into the act, you know it's a successful play. That's the first time I've seen Leach run the option to the wide side where he had some room to, to use his head. When he pitched the ball out, he'd already picked up six, seven yards, and uh, they have moved it very convincingly so far in the third quarter. Yes, he was into a blitz. They had Ron Locke, the rover, coming in, but he was picked up quite, quite effectively by Russell Davis. Sort of stuck it to him pretty good there. First down, Michigan, USC 47. That's a good hit on Roosevelt Smith. You saw him line up in an eye with a, with a wing back in the eye. That's Clayton coming out of motion. Jim Becker said he wants to do some of that stuff so that USC will be hesitant on defense. They don't want to just have him line up and expect the formation and just what to come out of it. Dennis Johnson didn't look too hesitant to me. Roosevelt Smith's been busy here in the third period. Second down, nine. Michigan on the USC 46. Alan Mitchell in motion. Leach will throw. Now he's going to fumble the ball loose. Scrambles for it. It's out of bounds. Everybody's there. He's smothered by those players, our viewpoint, on the Michigan sideline. It looked to me like Leach made a pretty good last-ditch effort to get his hand on the ball and get it out of bounds. He knew he was in trouble. Fumbled it forward. He comes back. It looks like he's got a receiver, Clayton, open. However, the ball hits off his knees he's, as he's tucking it in, trying to run. When he did go down, he did put his hand out. Well, I think those left-handed quarterbacks, you know, Kenny Stabler, those left-handed quarterbacks got something about those <laughs> forward fumbles. And, of course, an unusual game today with two starting left-handers. 39-yard line of USC. Third down and seven. Leach fakes. Look at him pursuing. He better throw. He throws on the he's run. Got he's got him. And it is a touchdown. Michigan. Roosevelt Smith got the ball. He beat Dennis Smith. He beat Dennis Smith. And Michigan's right back in. I don't know, Kurt, what it is that Bo Schembechler does at halftime. But they did the same thing last year in the Rose Bowl. Washington looked like they were running all over the top of them. This game is not going at all like that one did, but the score has. Now he puts it back in the ball game with a beautifully thrown ball across his body in the middle of the field. One of the toughest to throw, and he hits him right on the dead run. A 44-yard pass. Rick Leach, under extreme pressure, hit Roosevelt Smith down the middle. And Roosevelt Smith has been the busiest man on the field here in the third quarter. And I said that there's something about Michigan's third quarter. You know, I think they've outscored their opponent something like 90 to 10 in the third quarter, and it's sure, sure, and true here today. 
Here's the kick. It is up, and the kick is good by Drake Wilner. So we'll have a timeout. Seven minutes to go in the third period. And the score is USC 17, Michigan 10. They have a powerhouse college basketball schedule for you this winter in NBC. Let's look at the touchdown play again. All right, it's only the great athletes that can get into a bad situation to make a big play out of it. His, his intended receiver was covered. Clayton down the sideline, you can see him motioning to do something to get open. He's got four or five cats all over him. And that's a very hard throw across your body into the middle of the field when you're running to the, to the side you throw from. Roosevelt Smith takes it in easily, and it is now 17 to 10. That was all Rich Rick Leach, you know. Everybody's worried about his running abilities. The safeties forgot about the receivers were coming up to help out, and he put it on the money. He made it all happen. Here's the kick coming to Raymond Butler in the three, 15, 20. Down he goes on his 24-yard line. Kick with a touch of the absurd. There goes Charlie White. Charlie White starting to pick him up now. Tom Sebron, the outside linebacker, stopped it, but it's a first down USC. And they're going to pick, keep picking it up as long as their tackles. Keith Van Horn, uh, Otis Page do the kind of job they've been doing with Lynn Kane blocking in front of uh, White. They know they haven't been as effective as they're accustomed to being throwing the ball. They've got to move people up front. 2.20 to play in the third period. Trojans on the Michigan 47. Kane stops at the 50, uh, 45 yard line. Lynn Kane. Mike Turgovac, the middle guard, and Jerry Meter, one of the co-captains. Well, SC's got to take advantage of this quarter. They've been getting some pretty good field position, and that just doesn't happen the whole games. And, and they got to take some uh, advantage of that. They got to get a score in this quarter, hopefully on this drive, or it's going to give the momentum to Michigan, I think, going into the fourth quarter. Second down, eight. Rock the in motion. Charlie White, he goes down. He may have lost a yard. Mark Raymond really played that well, number 28. To bring him to the turf. Third coming for USC. They have a third and eight. Let's check the passing figures for McDonald. He's, he's only attempted uh, seven and completed four. With 23 yards. That's not what you call a blockbuster. Well, Way below his seasonal output. Bug Williams going out to the right. Third and eight. Going to the bug and he fell down. Williams fell down. They're slipping a lot here. Kevin Williams, 155 pounder, but he's an all Pac-10 receiver. Gets a one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's got him in a good position, but he can't keep his feet. Ball's thrown just a little behind him. Had he kept his feet, he could have been, he could have moved inside and grabbed it. Marty King punting. Mike Jolly again, the safety. A high kick. Fair catch call. Jolly fields it on his 10-yard line. Michigan will put the ball in play with 43 seconds to go in the third quarter. First down, Michigan on their 11. Leach out of goes to Roosevelt Smith. I haven't seen Michigan do this in previous Rose Bowls, throw deep in their own territory. Well, they wanted to throw the ball deep also, but it was very well played by Lavender. Gave the wide receiver no room at all. Leach had to come up, and that's the first time the linebackers have pursued well on the halfback. Well, I said that's the same play they've been running a lot. They try to run the receiver into the flat. They run the linebacker, I mean, the, uh, the halfback. They loop him out of the backfield. Hopefully, he'll cover, he'll bring the cornerback up, and they try to hit the receiver going down the sideline. Second down, 10. Roosevelt Smith stopped at the 12-yard line. He's hit there by Dennis Edwards, the freshman, a phenom at right tackle, and another freshman, Ricky Gray, the weak side linebacker. Third down, nine to go for Michigan. 
We may not get the playoff before the gun of the third quarter sounds. The wind is no factor, so it doesn't matter. There's the gun. And the end of the third quarter of the 65th Rose Bowl game with the score, the University of Southern California, 17, and the University of Michigan, 10. Kurt Gowdy, John Brody, O.J. Simpson take you into the fourth period. Michigan has outgained USC total offense. Michigan, 172 yards. USC, 131. And Michigan's had the ball 23 minutes and 7 seconds. USC, 21 minutes and 53 seconds. About even on possession. This is third down. The 12-yard line of Michigan, third and eight. Play action pass. Leach runs it out. He stopped at the 17. He's short of a first down. Dennis Johnson, the linebacker, pulled him down. So they'll have to punt. Greg Wilner again. This has turned into a punting duel this second half. Trident keeps giving SC good field position. The Ju Juice mentioned it earlier. You can't contain a good offensive football team if you give it to them five or six times in one half that way. Well, SC has not been taking advantage of it. They've had a good field position throughout the second half now, and they haven't gotten any points from it, and they're going to have to score here if they want to preserve this uh, lead. Kick us to uh, Butler in the 42. Butler trying to get outside. 45, 50. This speed got him out there. So his outside speed enabled him to pick up seven or eight extra yards. And the Trojans had the ball on the 46-yard line of Michigan with a score 17-10 USC. 14 minutes to go. There goes Kane. That time he tried outside tackle, Lynn Kane. Gene Bell, the Wolfman, slid over there to wrap him up. Put it on the USC 49, a gain of three, and second and seven. Well, it's a gain of about three and a half, and I think they, they consider that a successful play. Any time they can get near four yards on first down from the fullback, SC considers that a very successful play. The lights are on here in the Rose Bowl, by the way. Second down, seven. Riley White. And he picks up five more. He goes to the Michigan 46. This is just old bread and butter football right now. Straight ahead, bang it out, keep the ball. We're in the lead. Ron Simpkins again made the tackle for the University of Michigan. Now they've got a long two and a half. Interesting uh, fact. They escape with their life here against Notre Dame. USC has had some second half troubles during the year. Michigan digging in. There's wide. They got him. They nail him for a loss of the 49. Andy Canavito, who has been brilliant today as an inside linebacker. His father, Joe, played for Ohio State here in the 1958 Rose Bowl game. And that's where it's tough. Third down and two, third down and three. Watch Andy Canavino shoot right through the hole. He does in perfect position to bring down Charles Widener, forcing another turnover. Again, a punt. The deepest penetration for Michigan in this third and fourth period has been to their own 34-yard line. They have not had field position. They've got to hit a long pass, break the run, or start a drive, and they're now down to 5.58 remaining. Just checking my uh, running play-by-play -play. after that pass to Smith. They have been pinned back deep in their own territory since midway in the third period. No field position whatsoever. The kick by Marty King. Jolly on the 10. Jolly belted down. They'll put him along the 11-yard line. All right, we'll be back once again. Michigan again backed up toward their own goal line. 17-10, USC. Get in their huddle. They're on their 11-yard line. 
They have a first down. They have not had any operating room whatsoever here in this fourth period or late in the third quarter. And they have five minutes and 42 seconds to try and do something. Leach to Jackson. Jackson. Looked like he wanted to pass. He does pass. Throws it up in the stands. He was hit as he let it go. That was a flanker reverse with a pass coming off the reverse. Well, you know you've got to do something if you're Michigan. SC's kicking game has kept Michigan in the hole since midway through the third quarter. Since they scored their first, their only touchdown, they have not had good field position. That play, a little fooler play, looked as if had the man not been trying trying to go with the throw all the way, he might have turned the corner. Well, I think so. I think what Michigan is thinking also is the time now. They have to put the ball up in the air. They've got to preserve uh, some time on the clock that if they're not successful throwing the ball, it, at least they won't waste much time and will be able to get the ball again. Tony Hopefully Jackson, in better position. Tony Jackson went out. Ralph Clayton replaced him. It was Charlie Moses that hurried Tony Jackson on that throw. Now Leach is back to pass. He shoots it out. There he is. He's got a receiver for first down. That's Ralph Clayton. Clayton caught the ball up around his 30-yard line, tackled immediately by Larry Brazil, the cornerback. All right, Rick Leach does it in the toughest of circumstances. It's a one-man pattern. He's got Clayton going down deep into the zone area, behind the linebackers. Leach puts the ball over the top of Dennis Johnson, right where it has to be thrown. They get out of a hole, and they've got about five minutes and 27 seconds to do something. And Clayton is down. Let's watch him again. All right. Perfect turn, just the way you draw it up. Gives himself a lot of leeway to go for the ball wherever it's thrown. When you take a look, when a man is running against his own defense, just to come flying across there doesn't do you much good. He gives himself an opportunity to move wherever the ball is thrown. Leach is under a lot of pressure, puts it in the hole that, that exposes itself, and Clayton brings it down. I think the stage is set for Rick Leach to go out in a flurry here. He's going to put that last pass on the money. He hands off to Roosevelt Smith. And you have some great pursuit there by Myron Lapka, the left tackle, and Dimmler, the nose guard. They're a tough couple of fellas to run against, along with that, the right tackle, that freshman, Dennis Edwards, who has been such an excellent pass rusher today. 32-yard line of Michigan, second and eight. I'll tell you, there's a beautiful scene right now here, Pasadena. The sun, the setting sun is hitting the San Gabriel Mountain. And there's a sort of a pinkish color in those mountains. It's just beautiful. Second down, eight. Play action pass. The throw. Pop! Out of bounds. Gene Johnson, the tight end. You find me, Kurt, a better thrown ball than that one, and I will put in with it. He had the toughest possible throw to make he could. He had to get it over the top of Ron Lott, who was covering Johnson all the way. Johnson had only a step. He's throwing it running as fast as he can to get away from the pressure. They're putting a lot of people in on Leach. They know they've got to do something. They can't let him stand back there. Throws it on the run. Hits it right over the shoulder. Johnson gets one foot in. And that's all you need in college football. That's the first time they've hit him. First down, Michigan on their 49. They've come up from their 11-yard line. 4.27 to play. The option. Leach is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. And surging in there again is Myron Lapka, number 96. Most of the notoriety has gone to Rich Dimmler all year, but I think Myron Lapka's played about as good a football game as any down lineman out there today. Second down, 14. Michigan fans trying to get their club moving. Mitchell comes out. Rod Feaster goes in a wide receiver, number 18. He's flanking with the near side. Maybe they'll go to him. Second and 14. USC ahead, 17-10. He has the time. And he throws, and he's got his tight end again. Crossing the middle. Ricky Gray making the hit. Helped by Gary Cobb. Gene Johnson, his second second reception. Heard we're looking at a situation now with just a little little over three minutes to play. He's got third and eight. I very much look for him to try and pick it up on fourth down if they're not successful this time. If they don't, they've really got to stuff SC on a turnover. 
Well, I tell you, Rick, Rick certainly has the hot hand. Everything he's been throwing is right on the money now. Drive roaring. Third down eight. Michigan trying to put on a furious rally. Play action pass. He's going deep, deep, deep to Feaster. It is incomplete at the five. Rodney Feaster was there, number 18, but he was double teamed. Fourth and eight for Michigan. Dennis Smith had an excellent opportunity to get his third interception today. He was well covered. He pumps, he throws. It's a pretty good throw. The guy never was really open. Dennis Smith played the ball all the way. There's Feaster. He's trying to just dissect the zone, trying to outrun it, got fine speed. Nothing fancy about that one. He know Rick Leach just wound up, let that Hummer go. They are in a punt formation. Greg Wilner. Look for anything here. USC will, but it's going to be a punt. Fair catch call on the USC 15-yard line by Butler. Trojan ball. Now Michigan's hope is to hold him, hold him deep, get the ball back again, better field position, hope for anything. Well, I tell you, Bo obviously played for field position. He knows SC is not going to throw the ball in this series. He's going to have everybody on the line of scrimmage. Those linebackers are going to be on their toes leading forward. SC, if they can get a first down here, could really put him in the hole. It's two minutes and 44 seconds left to go in the game, and Bo Schimbrecker has just put the game on his defense's players' shoulders. You said that he knows SC is not going to put the ball up in the air. I think if they don't, they won't get out of that hole. I kind of look for him to do it. Three timeouts left for Michigan, two for USC. Charlie White straight ahead. And Charlie White is approaching 100 yards. John Robinson. With him there was Paul Hackett, who I think is responsible for a lot of the development of the quarterbacks at SC. Lots Kobe. The job he did on this seven, of course, with Bartkowski and Roth up at Cal. Excellent coach. Valley White again. And break loose. Down he goes on the 18-yard line. Look at Bo. Boy, Bo, Bo's in 10. Simpkins again. Dale Kites. Watch Simpkins. This man has been in the action all day long. I don't know how many solo tackles he's made, but he's had a piece of that ball carrier from down one today. They have a third down and seven. Ron Simpkins, who set the all-time record for most tackles this year. He's had six solos in this game. Canavino's had three. Simpkins has had five assists. Third down. Seven. McDonald. Off the cane. First down. And a big first down for USC. A delay play. Lynn Kane broken, and USC keeps the ball. All right, you're, you're correct. They did not put the ball up in the air. They did get out of the hole on a draw play. That's good play up front. They only made one mistake. He ran out of bounds. He should have stayed on the field of play, forced Michigan to use the timeout. He ran out of bounds, but at this point, with a minute and 24 seconds left, they're not playing defensive offense. They're going to play offense. They're going to try to get a first down. I think that's what they needed. Even if they don't get the first down, they'll punt, keep Michigan in the hole with very little time left. A minute 24 remaining. USC ahead, 17 to 10. Lynn Kane again. Kane finding the hole. Quick start. Canavino and Harden teamed up to take him. Now the ball is placed with a timeout call by Michigan to stop the clock with a minute 12 to go. Ball just over the 50-yard line. All right, Michigan has two timeouts left. However, if they get another first down, there is not enough time to keep things going. Let me check it. It's on the 46-yard line. All right, we're going to take a timeout here along NBC Way. 17 to 10 is the score. USC in the lead. Right now, the view for USC is at second and two on their 46-yard line. They're trying to keep the ball. Charlie White has a first down. They stopped the clock on the first down of the 49 of USC. Charlie White's gone over 100 yards. Lynn Kane has rushed for 90 yards. 17 to 10 USC, a minute eight to go. And the Trojans are hoping to hold on, let them vote, all the polls, 
Alabama won today, beating Penn State. Oklahoma, Nebraska coming up next. USC is claiming we beat Alabama at Alabama. We should be number one. That is what they hold on to this lead. Oh, they can sit on it right now. And now goes McDonald. 42 seconds to go. The controversial touchdown we showed you, the plunge by Charlie White, in which the touchdown counted, and we had one particular replay that they happened to find among all the replays with our Mully cameras that showed the ball popping out of White's hand and landing on the grass short of the goal line before he was there. John Robinson, Paul McDonald, they know they've had all they can handle this afternoon. This ball game has not been one that either team really dominated. I believe that's Michigan's last time out. Co-players of the game have been selected, Rick Leach and Charlie White. And they're on the cover of the Rose Bowl program. Down goes Paul McDonald. And the clock stops. This must be their last time out. There's the time remaining, 38 seconds. This 105,629. I know the crowd's more than that jammed in here. This is a happening in America, this Rose Bowl game. Well, let me tell you, that crowd is like a hometown crowd for the University of Michigan. They average at home about 104,000 people a game. That's amazing. This is their sixth game, OJ, that the Michigan team has played before over 100,000 people. And it looks like it's going to end up with another frustration for Bo Beckler. He has played five bowl games, four in the Rose, one in the Orange, and has not won that last game. And yet he's had the greatest coaching record in America the last 10 years. He had his team prepared in here. They came in and played a superlative game. The USC just edged him out and edged him out on a controversial touchdown call. And there's John Robinson coming across now. 17 to 10, the final score. USC won it. A defensive battle in the second half, only one touchdown score. And I think, too, right now, USC and Coach John Robinson know there's a chance that they may be voted number one. It looks to be between Alabama and USC. We'll just have to wait. There's both great sport, Bo. You bet. He's a, they they really man. are fond of each other. Uh, Robinson went to Schembechler's spring camp and to his coaching clinic and helped him. They have become very close friends since they played here in the 77 Rose Bowl. Yeah, game. Robinson also said that if his son that he wanted was recruited by Michigan, he'd tell him to go. That's about as much as you can say about another man. Ben Beckler going off, losing a hard-fought 17-10 game. There's McDonald, the quarterback, his coach Robinson. Paul McDonald has a chance to be a Rhodes Scholar here at USC in the footsteps of Pat Hayden. He went to the same high school as Pat Hayden, Bishop of Mont. And that's a real scholar athlete. Well, Robinson has won his second Rose Bowl. I, I understand that we have the USC quarterback, Paul McDonald, down on the field. Paul, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Fine. What about the game, Paul? One of the toughest games I've ever been involved in. I think Michigan had an excellent plan against us. They mixed it up really well. And uh, I'm going to be sore tonight, believe me. <laughs> well, you know, what did they do different? I know that you've, you've made, a, you made a, a career and a quick one at that. I'm sure it'll last longer. However, what were they doing defensively that kept you from being able to throw the ball to the outside as you have been all year long? Well, they were stunning all the time with the secondary guy in passing situations, second and eight, third and seven, whatever. And we'd, uh, we'd send Charlie in motion to the weak side and any time they saw that, they'd have a stunt from the other side, and they just outmanned us. We didn't really make the adjustment until later on, uh, a mistake on our part. They may have outcoached us a little bit there. We should have just went to maximum protection and have the two wide receivers go out and run an out or run a curl or whatever, and we but, didn't do that. Paul, this is OJ. You know, there was a lot of talk around the country this, uh, today. Who should be the national champions? Now, you knew uh, uh, about at the beginning of the game that Alabama won that game. Was there much conversation amongst the players about the Alabama game and this game? Well, they were just flashing, you know, telling us the score of the Alabama-Penn State game. Uh, we really didn't care uh, how it turned out, uh, just the fact that we were able to play in such a great game like this. And against such a fine team as Michigan was, was the real honor. If it happens that we end up to be national champs, then that's, that's all the better for us. 
Why only nine passes today, Paul? Well, I'll tell you, they, because of the fact that they were doing so many things like uh, blitzing and stuff, I really didn't have that much time to throw the ball. And Lynn Kane had an outstanding game, and Charlie was running well. Uh, the middle was open, so we just took what, what they gave us, and that's what you have to do in any game. You just can't pass to pass. You have to do what they, uh, they give you. Paul, thank you very much. Get into your locker room. We'll see you next year, your senior year, and good luck with that outstanding scholastic average you're building. Okay, thank you very much, Kurt and guys. Fight on, Paul. Paul McDonald, the quarterback. 17 to 10, the final score. USC won it.